Hello and thank you for joining me today. I'm Brent Bergherm and this time we're going to take a look at those prints that I got from MPix. So what we're looking at here, uh, if you look at the previous video I did, I looked at the idea of prepping those files and getting them ready in order to send them off to print and to hopefully do the best we can at getting those files ready to go, properly sharpened and all that good stuff. And I elected not to do their color correction. I just wanted to see how does my system compare to theirs and then what can I do differently if I were to submit pictures again. So let's look through that now. We have the files brought up on screen and then we'll review what we did there really quickly. And then I'll tear open the package and we'll get this going with our analysis, our assessment there. All right, so here we are in Photoshop and I've got all these pictures opened up and here's the ocean waves one that I did, the Plitvis Lakes one, the one from Hong Kong and the one from Dubrovnik. And so uh, let's remind ourselves too what these image sizes are. So they're all gonna be the same, so I'll just look at one of them. And so 2,500, let's go to inches so we can look at it, just eight by 10. And they recommended 250 pixels per inch. So that's why this is set the way it is. And then for our unsharp mask, remember I like to convert these elements to a smart object. And then I get what we call a smart filter. And that allows me to just simply reset whatever I want uh, to reset for our unsharp masking. So anywho, we are looking at 90%, 1.3 on the radius, and a threshold of 8. And I'm pretty sure I did that across the board on each of them, just so I could have some kind of standardization, because I wanted something that, this is my first time in a long time printing to MPix or any other online lab. I just wanted something as a standard line so I can make a judgment and make an assessment, and then I can give you an assessment for what I'm talking about and what I'm looking at, whether I like it, whether I don't like it, what I can do to make changes. So the reason I chose these numbers, those are really close to my standard numbers. So the amount, that's how strong the sharpening is. The th radius is how far away from that defined edge that we go out with the adjustment. And then the threshold, that is what does it take in difference between those two pixels. This is a bright pixel, this is a dark pixel, let's say. What does it take to make those uh, define as an edge? And so we define these different levels, these luminance levels. These need to be you know, a, a difference in value of eight levels, whatever that is. Uh, but it's a good starting point. And that should mean that out here in the nice, you know, very smooth gray sky, nothing is happening as far as trying to sharpen. So if I had a little bit of digital noise coming through there, I wouldn't be trying to sharpen that digital noise with these settings. Okay, so there's our settings. Let's now rip open this package. So as you can see, it is still in the package. I haven't looked at it at all yet. So we're gonna see everything here on screen and I'll probably back up a little bit so we can see it just a little bit better on screen as I open it up. So they come in a nice uh, plastic little envelope, little sleeve, and then I've got you know this little packing slip, which is just tell me it has four eight by tens, nothing else different. Now, if I remember right, I did the the uh, ocean image on their true black and white, and um, so it's a little bit taped together and on the edges, but then we have an opening at the top here, you can see uh, they just come out the side and they are packaged separately. So that tells me they got them, you know, this is gonna be on the, the true black and white paper. So let's look at that one first and see what we're dealing with. Of course, when you see it on screen, when we look at color and whatnot on screen, you're not gonna be able to tell like a difference there, but let's take a look now. I'm gonna do what I can to analyze it in the lighting I have. This is my standard office at home, but I do have a pretty nice light up above behind me, and then I got two lights over here in front of me for the video work. So I am in a fairly well-lit environment, and for the most part, that's daylight balanced. One of these is daylight balanced, so I have a slightly mixed lighting in this, in this scenario here. Let's take a look, though, and first off, compare it to the screen and I'll do what I can to just kind of tell you what's going on here. As I'm looking at it and I compare it to the screen, uh, the screen is definitely, it feels more 
neutral, actually, I guess is the only way to put it, uh, where this paper feels like it has a warm tone to it. I definitely get a feeling that it is truly black and white, but it just feels like it has a warm tone in the paper fibers itself. And then as I look at the details of the print, as I look at, and I'm going to do a little bit of pixel peeping, so forgive me, I have to take off my glasses to do this. As I look at the details of the print, it is definitely very faithful in what I was expecting. And as I'm really close like this, I might even suggest it's a little over sharpened, but people never review a print like this, do they? It's always at, at least 18 inches, maybe 16 inches, somewhere in there. So as I pull it back and I'm looking at it and I'm assessing it for, you know, for quotes, for real, uh, and, and I'm getting a feel for it, I really do like that sharpening. I still might say just pulling it back a little bit, that was at 90%. Uh, basically, if I were to pull it back to about 75%, that would probably be dialed right in right where I want it. Now, being that this is a true black and white print, there's there's no color for me to, to ascertain, really. Uh, it's just about the, the nature of the paper versus what I'm seeing on screen, and, and I'll expect differences like that. So I'm going to say this is a really good print, and it's going really well. Let's take a look now at these others where we have some green foliage, we have some nice blue in that water, and oh my goodness, as I pull these out, it's almost like they added some kind of some kind of shininess to it, some kind of extra, um, look how glossy that is. You can see it reflecting uh, a little bit uh, in the light there uh, as we... I don't know, it just looks like it has some kind of spray on it that's adding a little extra sheen, a little extra something to it. Here's the one from Hong Kong. And then the one from Plitvis Lakes. So I'm going to take a look now at this image from Plitvis Lakes. And I got to, boy, I just got to do a different print because that texture on this e-surface print that I ordered... It's just something I'm not a fan of. I know they're trying to make it feel like a, a traditional uh, photographic print, but it, unless I hold it just right, so there's zero reflections coming off of it, you know, a direct reflection from the from above or whatever. Um, yeah, it's just a little much uh, on the reflections, and it's got a little bit of that uh, kind of a pebbly almost texture to it. Uh, it's not glossy in in a sense. It's It's got a little bit of a very, very, very slight texture. Overall, it's nice. I just find it way too reflective. All right. Engaging the color. Uh, this is another thing where this is a lot warmer than what I'm seeing on screen. And I'm trying to determine if I like it because... Um, well, it, it just changes the, the path, actually, I really do like, and the waterfall itself, but those those green leaves, they're just a little bit too yellow, a little bit too washed out in the yellow side of things. So I do like what I see on screen better. But remember, again, I, I'm, I'm learning here in this process. I'm not looking at it and saying, oh, I'm really disappointed because they messed up on color. I clicked that button that said, don't color correct, if you remember uh, in that other video. And I said, I just want to see... You know, from what I'm doing here to what you're going to give me, what what am I truly looking at? And so here I, I have a, an initial assessment. They're just coming through a little warmer. So if I wanted to counteract for that, then I just need to uh, do something here in my editing that allows me to even go cooler. And then I'm able to uh, have it. I know it's going to warm up a little bit. Uh, once I have it printed. Let's take a look at this Hong Kong print. This has a lot of different details in it. It's all about the the rusty texture, the, the, the metal door, and then a little bit of green coming through with those leaves. The same exact idea is happening where it's just a lot warmer in this image. Um, you know, I, I still prefer the slightly cooler effect. I guess I might say if I were to envision something between the two on this particular image, I would be all right. As far as the sharpening is concerned, this one is spot on. It's just right there, perfect. And the, the Plitvis Lakes one too, that sharpening amount, I probably could have a slightly more sharpening in this, uh, in this subject because I just think I could get a little more detail coming out. So really it's, you know, these different subjects, it, you know, they require different sharpening effects and, and that's totally fine. It is a learning process. 
All right, so this one with Dubrovnik, this is this is definitely interesting with the warmer hues that are coming through. And the blue is a lot darker too. And you might also remember from that video, we looked at the whole idea of how much, how far those blues were out of gamut. And so we were just like, well, we're going to let it ride and we're going to see how it goes. And uh, those blues are the the biggest change because they're just a lot darker uh, than what I'm seeing on my screen. And again, my screen is not perfect either, of course, but for what's actually in the file. Um, the 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 roofs and the wall i do like the slightly warm warming effect that's happening here but it's all about just figuring out again what makes it work for us the sharpening is perfect uh there as well uh, it's coming across really nice it looks good so what have we learned here we've learned that at least for my setup how i did it the images come back a little bit on the warmer side of things i have a feeling if they were to come back a little more on the cooler side of things, I probably would be a little more like, Ew, what are they doing? But the fact that it came back warmer, for some reason, I'm less offended by that. That's not something that, you know, accuracy is what I really want. Uh, so I, what I see here is what I'm going to get on that print. Um, are they, you know, what, what kind of percentage are they? They're easily within 10% of color accuracy. And that is pretty much a standard, you know, if you go to your traditional... Uh, you know, offset printing and you're doing a press check and the like. And if, if it comes within 10% of what you're getting on press is within 10% of what your proof was, then they were pretty much to say, run with it. It's a good, it's good to go. Uh, these are easily within 10%, I would say, probably even closer to like 5% of a variance. Very, very, very close uh, there. But that just means, you know, I just need to, to cool it down a little bit or warm it up a little bit, whatever I'm talking about here. Um, I need to make it cooler if, I, if that's what I want them to produce for me. So I might go here in Photoshop, if I were to um, make a little adjustment here and I've got a photo filter, right? And I can take this cooling filter, let's just take the cooling filter 80, for example. And that's a little bit strong. So we'll take the density down to probably 15 or 10, somewhere in there. If I were to flatten this down and then I were to take that and send it to them, they're probably going to give me something that is more in line with what I wanted, which is without that filter. So that would be an easy fix for me to be able to do something that says, is a little bit of a color correction that says, this will get me more in line because I, I, I've taken a look. I've, I spent, what was it, $14 or whatever it was. I spent $14 on three different images and I can now make an assessment and now I'm going to get even closer to getting perfectly accurate for what I'm intending to have printed. All right, so that's it for these prints from MPix. I will be doing at least five more labs total for my online print course and at least one more lab for here on YouTube. And then we're going to also be talking about this on the podcast. So either Latitude Photography Podcast or Master Photography Podcast will cover it in two different ways. With Latitude, that's just me talking. And with Master Photography, that I, you know, I've got a couple other people sometimes on there with me, at least one other person on there with me. So we'll be talking about about these things coming on the podcast and we'll get into more details especially as I get more labs in more results from more labs that's going to be awesome to be able to then compare from lab to lab and see how these are coming together all right thank you so much until next time happy shooting